Hi everybody, this is me coming to you and I'm finally here again after nearly two months of inactivity. Well, I actually wasn't inactive during this time, I just had to spend the time on different projects like the company I recently funded or the weekends on fixing and repainting the garage out there because I just got my first car and needed the garage for it. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can print something like this name tag on a single extruder machine and I'm going to do it on my Anit A2 Plus. Well, this video is relatively long and most of it will be a tutorial in front of the PC, but altogether it took me like six times to get it right and yeah, finally. I'm really glad that I managed to do it. Originally I planned to print this on my JG Aurora A5 and when it was time to get the first hose printed, the coupler broke and you know, all of the good stuff. And of course, JG Aurora has a different size of their couplers, so I had no replacement and ordered an original replacement part instead. It was like 9 bucks. It's looking pretty awesome and hopefully it works well. But other than that, it's still a good machine. It's my favorite printer so far and you will see it in my next videos anyways. This video is actually part 2 of the dual color printing with a single extruder machine and part 1 has been done already a little while back on my init A2 Plus where I show you how to enable the M600 command, what it is and how to print with two colors on a single extruder machine. But those times we changed the colors at the end of a layer. Well, in this video, we're going to change the color within the layer, as you can see, which is even more awesome. Alright, with that being said, let's move over to the PC and get this tutorial started. Well, not this PC, but the one up in my room. Alright, so here we are at the PC, where we are going to create our 3D model, which we are then going to export as a dual color model to print on our single extruder machine, the ANET A2 Plus in our case. Although the whole process sounds pretty complex and it actually isn't that simple, we are going to make it simple by breaking it down into 6 simple steps to follow. The first step is to create the text in a way that it looks good. Then we are going to add it into Tinkercad and finalize the design there. After that we are going to export it as a dual color model from Tinkercad. In Cura we are going to re-add the ANET A2 Plus as a dual extruder machine. Then we are going to slice the model. And the sixth and the last step is to post process the generated G-code file so that we can actually print it on our init A2. So let's start off with the first step. And before we can actually create any text, we need to select the font. Either choose one of the pre-installed ones or just quickly go to Google Fonts. And I already know which font to take. But if you don't know, just browse for one that you like. In my case, I'm going to go with Exo2. So I'm going to select it and download it right away. Oh, before I forget, don't forget to check the license to be sure that you're really allowed to use it. And in this case it's the open font license so it's no problem. We're going to click here on the selected and then just download it. Just download it on the desktop for now. There we go. Let's quickly extract them all. And select all of them except that txt file which contains the license. Right click install. In my case I already have them installed so it will quickly overwrite them. It's no problem. So to now be able to write your text, open up your scalable vector graphics tool of your choice. I'm going with Inkscape because it's free, but it just crashed so I have to redo the whole things. You can leave everything at default here. Just click here on the text button and draw a text field. And select all of that with Ctrl A. Select your recently installed font, here exit 2, and increase the font size to even larger. We're going to scale it down in Tinkercad later on, so this is the text we are going to display. Now you could make it thin, but I'm going to stay with bold. It looks pretty cool. The next thing we need to do is to convert it to path, because Tinkercad can read scalable vector graphics, but doesn't interpret these elements correctly. So just go here to path and say object to path. Now it's not a text anymore, but just a list of paths. Click here, File, um, Save, save it as a plain SVG, that's important. I'm just going to call it coming to text dot scalable vector graphics. It needs to be plain SVG, otherwise it doesn't really work because Tinkercad doesn't know how to interpret this. Open up your Tinkercad design. I have already prepared one. Click here on import and then choose a file. 
we have it saved on the desktop. Click here on the exported SVG file and say open. Now center on the art, that's important. That's good, we can scale it down, so import. It takes a while and there we go, as you can see it has finally imported. So step one is done. Step two is to finalize the design. I want to have some sort of small tag. Now we have finished our design and need to export it as a dual color model. To export it as a dual color model, it's always a little bit of a hassle. You need to select just the font. And of course this doesn't want to, so let's just hide this one here. Select the font, show all again. Now you have the font selected. Now let's duplicate it and make it a whole. And now hold down the shift key Click the red one and the green one and say group. Now you should have two distinct models. One with a hole and the other one is just inserted here. Now, do not move them. So we're going to click on here, just the font and say export as an SDL file. And we are going to come to underscore tag, let's call it font. And now let's hide this one. And you see the other one has the hole inside now. Click this one say export, again SDL file, and now I'm just going to call it base. So come on tube, tag base. All right, and the files are exported. If we quickly look up the desktop folder with my quick preview here. If you want to know how to enable this preview, you just need to set the default opening program of SDL files to your, the mixed reality viewer. So now we have the tag with just the hole inside, so that there is actually no text and just the text, which is going to fit in into this perfectly. So that's the trick. And step three is finished. Now in Cura, we're going to print it with the ANET A2 plus, but it's actually a dual color model and we will um, use Cura to slice it for a dual color machine. So we're going into the manage printer menu. Then we are going to say add, let's call it ANET, a2 plus dual color. Of course, the init A2 plus is in my case still a single extruder machine. The size is 220 by 270 by I think 220 or just 200, doesn't matter actually. We have a heated bed. We use normal Marlin flavor. We have two extruders, that's important. As we have selected two extruders, we have two settings menus here, one for each extruder. One thing to notice, for some reason, Cura always thinks that we use 2.85 millimeter filament. Make sure to set this one accordingly, otherwise that you have severe under extrusion. No offset, that's also important. Make sure that these settings are the same in this case. We don't need any encodes in this case. I think I had edited them, but I'm not sure what's different. So I'll just copy this over. Oh yes, I edited the one millimeter at the end. So now we are just going to open our files, both of them. Now we need to point the correct material. We have on the extruder one, we have, uh, for example, we have the blue PLA on the first one. And on the second extruder, you need to select it first to set the color. We have the orange PLA. We want to print the text with the orange, so right click the text and select the extruder you want to print it with. Now we are going to merge these models. The way this works is you select both of them and while holding the shift key down, right click, click merge. If this merging fails for some reason, you need to re-export the files. Normally when I export dual color models from Tinkercad, it takes two or three trials, but this time I was for some reason lucky, but I suppose this is because the model is so simple. I would say this is fine, but before we go, we quickly enable the prime tower. We don't need an ooze shield as we actually just have one extruder, so it doesn't do anything. This prime tower is in a dangerous location. The nozzle is switched, it goes over there and primes the other extruder. In this case, it isn't bad to have it on actually. Alright, this is an edit done a week later. 
and I have already printed this part on my Enid 80 Plus and it came out disastrous. And this is because I forgot to turn off combing. The way combing works is that it tries to avoid retractions and as you can see where the text is there are a lot of travels that are not retracted and therefore it came out looking disastrous. And to avoid this we are just going here and search for combing and we are going to set off. And as you can see there are only a few non-retracted moves left. Don't care about them, they are fine. All right, what we need to do is to edit the materials because there is a feature in Cura that actually cools down the bossed extruders so that they don't leak out that much. And it's pretty annoying because then in this case, the printer stops and heats up while printing or in an area that's actually printed and you will see ugly blobs in the end. So just go here on the materials then manage materials, of course it opened on the wrong screen again. And in the print settings, you can see there's a standby temperature. Make sure that this one is the same as the printing temperature. So I'm, in this case, I'm just going to copy it over here. Do the same for the other material. In this case is the orange one. And there you go. Again, another week has passed. And this is now my like sixth trial to get it work. And it didn't because in the material tab of both extruders are hidden settings and namely the initial printing temperature just set this to 195 degrees the same for the final printing temperature then all the way to the bottom here there is the nozzle switch retraction distance and this is too long what happens is that the filament is pulled out of the extruder and when it wants to get back in well it's stuck it doesn't go back in and well a disaster so just set this to like four millimeters or something or I have the retraction distance as five so you can set it as five too. With an is 3 with six clone you shouldn't go above six or something but five works fine in my case. Yeah as you can see it has re-sliced now we're going to save it to a file then I'm just going to overwrite the existing one now we are just going to open it with the text editor we like I'm using Visual Studio Code because I'm a programmer and I really like this program. Alright, and there's a few things that we need to do. The first thing is to define how many layers we actually want to have dual colored. In this case, there's a reason why the visible side of the model or the front side of the model is on the bottom. Because it actually makes no sense of printing all 10 layers in this case with two colors. While, don't forget that you have to switch the colors once per layer, so, so what we are going to do is to just, I'm just going to print the orange part in two layers and then the rest will just be blue. So that's what we want to keep in mind. So this G code file doesn't know anything about our M600 command, which actually initializes a filament change. But instead, Cura works with so-called tools. As you can imagine, tool zero is the blue extruder, while tool one is then probably going to be the orange one. But uh, we have a single extruder machine, so we actually just have one tool. I don't know what happens if you leave the comments in. I really don't know. Therefore, we are going to remove them. And starting off, we are going to quickly search for all. And now it will at least highlight everything that has a T inside. As you can see, there's a lot. But don't worry, we are going to get rid of them. First thing, delete the first line. Nobody needs it. Delete them. Delete those lines as well. These are actually for preheating. But we have set the Initial temperature is same as the boss temperature, so there will be a few useless comments here because Cura just outputs them. And now make sure that you find D1 in this case, we said. Here is our first D1 change. What it actually does is change to orange. But in this case, we don't have a second extruder as mentioned before, so we are just going to replace the D1 with an M600. Don't worry about the text after the semicolon, as it's a comment. We have now switched to T1. What we are going to do now, or what's going to happen afterward, is that we are going to switch back to T0. So let's search for it. Um, if there are some temperature settings, we can just delete them. Nobody cares. Go for the next one. Here is the T0. It's again going to be replaced with the M600. And this time we are going to switch back to the blue. So what we're going to do next is to basically search for any of those and delete them, any leftovers. So just go with the T0. As 
you can see we have managed to go through all the zeros. Now let's go back to D1 and do the same thing again. Now we have actually gone through all of the D comments and replaced them. So if we say D0, there are no results. If we search for D1, also there are no results. So what we're going to do now is to click on file and say save. This model is now ready to be put onto the SD card for printing. And I'm not going to do this on camera here because I have probably a driver issue so that I currently can't write the USB sticks or SD cards. And I'm going to reinstall Windows 10 here so this isn't an issue hopefully, as long as it's no hardware problem. But see you back in the shop. Alright, here we are in the shop again. And we're starting with the print. After the print is started in black and orange, the first layer is quickly printed until it's time to print the inside of the letters, where you are prompted to change the filament. Then the orange filament is going to print another skirt and the prime tower and then the inside of the letters for two layers. After the second layer is finished with orange, you are prompted to change the color again back to black this time. And from there onward, the printer uses the black filament to finish its model. As you can see, it wasn't really that hard to get something like this printed on a single extruder machine. But it's not a practical solution as you have seen. And the model has been carefully planned to, of course, be suitable for this case. And something more complex is probably going to fail and or really, really complex to print with the thousands of color changes. This was more like a proof of concept and well, it actually worked. I'm happy. All right, with that being said, I hope that you liked this video. If you have any questions or any feedback for me, please make sure to include it down below. I will read through all of your comments and normally come back to them within 24 hours. Have a nice day. See ya.